Hi, I'm Margaret, and today it's all about chocolate. So sit back and relax. Enjoy. So, the first thing you'll need when you're working with chocolate is a good sharp knife and a chopping board. There are, of course, lots of different types of chocolate you can use. These are probably the best, the milk and the plain. You can, of course, use regular chocolate. Now, the list of other things you can use to decorate it with are endless. I've just chosen a few things here to show you. You can really use your imagination here. There's no end to the possibilities. I've included hundreds and thousands here. I couldn't help include a blast from the past. I wonder how many of you remember jazzies. Now, tempering chocolate the professional way can be a really long drawn out process. But I don't want to do that. I just want a little bit of chocolate that I can work with at home. So I'm going to show you my quick and easy way of making sure that your melted chocolate is tempered. The essential thing you'll need for this method is a plastic bowl. You can use trays or a small board to set your chocolate on. And if you've got a steady hand, you can use a pattern to trace. Bubble wrap makes a nice pattern when you've spread chocolate on it. I use baking paper, but you can just as easily use foil. These are nice, these long plastic strips. You can make a nice chocolate collar for a cake with those. You can buy it on a larger roll if you're going to do a lot of this. Chocolate moulds are good to use. I recommend silicon because they're so easy just to pop the chocolate out when it's set. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. These are the ones I used for the homemade chocolates a few weeks ago. It's also good to have different things to wrap them in if you're going to give them as presents. And here's a few utensils that might help you with your chocolate work. You won't need all of these and you can improvise with other things. So here's my quick and easy method. First you need to cut the chocolate into as small a pieces as you can and then pop it into a plastic bowl leaving enough room in the bowl to stir. We're using plastic because it doesn't hold the heat, like glass or ceramic. After the first 30 seconds, you won't notice too much difference, but it's very important to stir because the chocolate will be starting to melt. After the next 20 seconds, you'll start to see a difference, but do stir it. This distributes the heat and stops the chocolate from getting too hot. You'll need to really keep an eye on it now. Stir after every 10 seconds from here. The idea is to stop the chocolate from getting above 32 degrees. If it gets too warm, it'll go out of temper and it won't have that nice snap and shine that we're used to seeing. At this point, you'll still have small pieces of unmelted chocolate it's these small pieces which will help to keep the chocolate tempered. Once these have melted, your chocolate is ready to use. 
Let's start with jazzies. Quick and easy, just like chocolate buttons, with those lovely hundreds and thousands on top. Don't wait too long to put the hundreds and thousands on. They set a lot quicker than you think. Let them sit in the fridge for at least half an hour. Oops, there's one missing. Wonder where that one went. A good way to tell that the chocolate's tempered is that there's no mark left on the baking paper. You can also check for tempered chocolate by breaking it. It should have a really nice snap and be shiny at the bottom. Hmm, they won't last long. They can be a snack while I'm doing the rest. As Easter's coming up, I thought I'd try the eggs next. If you want a pattern on the outside of the Easter eggs, just pop it in first. I like easy patterns, so a swirl or a drizzle works best for me. Let the pattern dry just for a minute or two before you add the rest of the chocolate. Make sure you smooth it out so it covers all of the inside edge. Then turn your mould upside down and let the excess chocolate just drip out. Pop your mould upside down on a fresh piece of baking paper and when it's been in the fridge for about an hour you can pop them out and they're all ready to use. To join the two halves together just pop them on a warm tray or a pan and then join them together if you like. You can pop something inside, so it's a nice treat when they're opened. Smooth the sides down, and hey presto, you've got an Easter egg. The bubble wrap's nice and easy too. It's just a matter of spreading it out in a nice even layer. Then pop it in the fridge until it's set. The safest way to peel it off the paper is to turn it upside down and gently, bit by bit, pull it off. You can then break it into shards and it can be used as a chocolate decoration. I used it on my little fudge cakes a couple of weeks ago. This one's fun to do. You have to be a bit organised and make sure you've got the ice ready, of course. But the chocolate sets almost immediately and you can make some lovely patterns. A 
There we go. A nice little chocolate bowl for some ice cream. This one's my favourite. You'll need tempered chocolate for this, but you will have to stir it a little bit after it's been tempered, just to get it to the right consistency. If it's too runny, it won't make that nice chocolate bar shape. It'll just spread over the baking paper instead. It helps to weigh the baking paper down with something, because when you spread, it'll help to keep it nice and still for you. Just spread it out into a nice rustic chocolate bar shape and add anything you like on top. I've gone for flake little gold nuggets it's a good idea to press things gently down just to make sure they don't come off and how about a final drizzle of white chocolate A little bit of gift wrap and this would make a stunning present, especially for a chocoholic like me. Now here's a good one that would make any cake nice and fancy. This is a chocolate cake collar. Lay the plastic strip on a wooden board and weight it down with something that will keep it still for you. I've cut the strips into two halves, which makes it easy to manage. I'm making a very casual pattern here. You can be a bit more fancy if you like, but I like to keep things simple. Remember to go both ways when you're doing this. It makes your cake colour much stronger. Leave it for a few seconds once you've finished, but don't let it set, it still needs to be able to bend to fold it round the cake. After about an hour or so, peel the plastic off and there you go. I do hope you've enjoyed my chocolate video. If you want any other ideas, do check out my other videos. I do use chocolate an awful lot. Thanks for watching. Catch you next week.